morning. Come on, everybody in the building, give God a hand clap of praise this morning. If you love the Lord like we do, give God a hand clap of praise this morning. He didn't have to do it, but he did. And the psalmist says, come by here, Lord, come by here. Lord, we need you to come by here. Somebody's praying, come by here, Lord, come by here. say kumba here kumba here yeah. lord yeah. somebody needs you somebody's praying somebody's crying right. somebody's about to give up lord come yeah. by here oh. right where you are in the altar of your hearts we're coming together and we ask god to come by here to just be with us a little while as we go into our prayer closet and as we seek god's favor in his face 2022 may and may not have started out the way that you wanted it to, but God is still good. And his mercy is everlasting. And his words say every day we rise to new mercies. So this morning as you approach your prayer closet, I ask that you shift your focus on how you see prayer and humble yourself in God's presence. Incline your ear to hear from him. You don't have to talk. Just let him do the speaking at the altar of your heart. And if you then set your heart heavenwards, I believe God will hear and answer your prayers. One thing we can do is thank God. That's one of the greatest expressions of a sinner is to thank God for saving us through Jesus Christ. And we come this morning as living witnesses that all of us who are able to be present right now, that God's grace and mercy has rest upon you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. As Deacon Lippman lead us in our prayer closet now, when he go, as he go in to pray for us, as you and I enter our closets, let us likewise humble ourselves before God's presence. The psalmist says, bow down and worship him. 
So let's bow ourselves in his presence as we enter into the closet. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, merciful Father, kind Father. Father, we bless your holy name. Father, we love and adore you. Father, we give you all the praise and we worship you because you're worthy of all the praise. We thank you for life, Father. We thank you for breath. We need you to leave, live, Lord. We need you to breathe. Yes, thank Lord. you, Jesus. We thank you. Thank you for provision. We thank you for healing. Yes, thank Lord. you for strength and joy. We praise you for your abundant supplies, you. Lord, for supplying all our needs. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Have mercy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, deliver us from evil. And unite the knots to prevent us from being united with you, God. Please, Father. Father, remove the have nots, the can nots, the do nots that we have in our mind. Help Thank us you. to stay focused on you, Lord. Thank you. Erase the will nots, the may nots, the might nots Thank you. that may find a home in our hearts, Father. Yeah. Release us from the could nots, the would nots, and the should nots, Father, yeah. that obstruct our lives. Yeah. Most of all, Father, remove from our minds, our hearts, and our lives yeah. all of the am nots that have allowed to hold us back. Thank you, Lord. Especially the thoughts, Father, that we're not good enough. Come on, Lord. Your word says that prayer of the faith shall heal the sick, Father. We come to you yeah. today for a healing. Thank you. Heal us from all sickness, diseases, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you for healing us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. For those bereaving families, Father. Yeah. Yeah. Give them comfort and peace. Yes. We ask that the Holy yeah. Spirit come in right now, Father, and touch peace. us. Touch Reverend's uh, beard, Lord. Please, Lord. Give him a word today for us, Father. Thank you, Lord. That somebody might yield and say, Thank you, Lord. I want to be saved. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving us, Lord. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, yes. amen. 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 Yes. Psalmist says, Jesus keeps me near the cross.
Jesus, keep me near the cross. Our hearts and minds will be led now in our scripture reading. Sister White will lead us in our scripture reading, and Sister Hamilton will lead us in our responsive reading. We ask you to hear ye thus say the word of God. Good morning. Good morning. The scripture will be coming from Luke, the 10th chapter, the 25th through the 37th verses. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all the mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou shalt answer right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among the thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levi. And when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, and he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And went to him and bound up his wounds, poured in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more on him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him and fell among the thieves? And he said, He that shows mercy on him, and said Jesus unto him, Go. And do thou likewise. Amen. This is the word of the Lord for God's people. Amen. 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 Good morning. The responsive reading will be coming from Luke 9th chapter, verses 57 through 62. Amen. Now it happened, as they journeyed on the road, that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, 
but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another one also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. We thank God for the prayer. We thank God for the scripture that was read by Sister White and the response to reading by Sister Hamilton and the prayer by Deacon Littman. As we come together now, let us continue to worship God and serve God in our giving of our tithes and our offerings. As the ushers now come to receive your giving back unto God as God has blessed you with, let us be cheerful in our giving. Why? Because God loves a cheerful giver. And that's what we come to do this morning. As the choir prepares uh, a song for us, hold on to God's unchanging hand. And uh, trustees are now present and ready to receive it. May the ushers come now to receive the baskets and pass out. And may our hearts and minds return to God in this part of worship as we worship him in giving.
Dear you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. Oh, you Father, we realize oh, that many are oh, not here this morning. What well, we just thank you for those that decided to come out, Lord, and press their way. Father, in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18, it says, in everything in you give thanks. And Lord, I give you thanks. Yeah. Lord, but these blessings, this financial blessing we received this morning, please let us use it wisely for the upkeep of your kingdom. This prayer I ask in your name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh Jesus, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh God, oh God, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. He won't leave you, He won't leave you, He won't leave you, He won't leave you. Oh God, build your hopes on things eternal. Oh God, oh God, you got changing hand and build your hope yes, yes. on things yes. eternal yes. hold yes. to God's unchanging hands yes. you want to just bring to your attention a few brief announcements look at your neighbor and say neighbor yes. it's good to see you yes. on this first Sunday morning yes. of February yes. I pray you be back next Sunday God bless and be with you as we fellowship together. A few thoughts that I will share with you. The Brotherhood wants to remind you that on all Brotherhoods on this coming Tuesday, after the first Sunday, we have our Brotherhood meeting during the month. So please, brothers, be advised about our Brotherhood meeting as we come together. Deacon Graham and Sister Graham are on en route back to Charleston. They went to visit the family of, or support the family of Sister Lydia Kimbrough, who was one of our members, her father passed, so they went down to Alabama to visit with them and to share in the homegoing celebration. So let's pray for them and pray that they have safe travels coming back to Charleston. That's what love does for us. That's why we are called to get involved. It don't make no difference what the di distance is if we're able to go. Words are fine, gifts are fine, but your presence mean a whole lot when you can do it. We thank God for them, and so let's pray for them that they have safe travels. Deacon Graham also want to remind all men, next month, the last Saturday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of next month, we have our men's retreat. We've had quite a few brothers to line up, sign up, and pay up. We still have, we have a total of 35 slots. We got some slots left that we want to fill. So brothers, if for men only, young men, 12 and over, and men, so we're asking brothers in here, I see men in here right now, we ask you to, if the God spare your life, to set your calendars to be off next, that Friday, the last Friday and Saturday of next month, our men's retreat. We're asking you to participate. If you can't afford, it's $100 per person, but it covers Friday, Saturday, and returning on Sunday. We're going to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and have fellowship together, and prayerfully catch some fish. So the reality to it is, is we're going to have a men's retreat, do some fishing, but be fisher of men as well trying to set our hearts turned towards heaven. So if you have not given uh, your money towards this uh, event, then please see Deacon uh, Graham or one of the brothers in the brotherhood to pay, your, pay that up in that assessment and then fellowship with us. Ladies, if you got a man in your house who's 12 and over and you believe that retreat would work for him, up to we're only going to, we're capping it off at 35. So we have some space left, then pay for him. To come And if there's a brother in here who cannot afford to go and you're earnest about going, then see me and I'll make sure I assist you with going. But I just want you to know that this is for men and we want to come together. 
and we want to have fellowship. Women, I understand that you all are working towards something else. So ladies, when you all hear the request of the women working towards a women's retreat, I ask you too to participate, to get together. We have not because we've not asked for it. And we've not even been obedient in that which we already have. So please, let's come together and work together in that regards. We have baptism next second Sunday. Currently, we have two participants for baptism, so let's be mindful. We have our Black History Month is upon us. We know they say February is Black History Month, but we celebrated uh, 365, 24-7. So this morning, as we come together, we want to recognize two of our very own as we have set aside time now to honor them as Black History. If we don't celebrate our own history, who, who's going to, right? And we got history right here in Jerusalem, so we're going to celebrate our history here in Jerusalem. Are you ready up there to celebrate with us as to outstanding? So pay, check out the screens as we share our Black History Moment. This is Black History Month. I just want to refresh our memory of four Black Americans who made it in a racist society. Number one, Shirley Chisholm was a congresswoman from the state of New York. Number two, Marian Anderson was a singer. She sang to a group of 75,000 people in Washington, D.C. Marian Anderson came to Beaufort, South Carolina. A group of us from Penn School went to Beaufort to hear Marian Anderson. We were not allowed in the auditorium because of the color of our skin. Eddie Robinson. Eddie Robinson was a football coach at Gremlin State University. Eddie Robinson won 334 games. He broke the record set by Bear Bryant at Alabama. Number four, Madam C.J. Walker, the first American to earn one million dollars. She earned it by investing in her own hair company, $1.50. Thank you, Sister Teresa McNeil. Amen. This month is Black History Month, and the person I'll be speaking on is Simone Biles. Simone Biles was born Simone Ariana Biles on March 14, 1997, in the town of Columbus, Ohio. Simone and her sister Audrey were adopted in 2000 by their maternal grandfather, Ron Biles, and his wife, Nellie Biles. Simone and Audrey were raised together while their older brother was separated until they got older. Simone and her siblings were abandoned at a very young age by their father, and their mother was battling alcohol and drug abuse when they were little. Simone Biles went on to graduate from the University of the People and joined gymnastics. She also went on to write books such as Courage to Soar, A Body's Motion, and Life in Balance. She won a total of 32 Olympics and World Championship medals. She's also won Best Female Athlete ESPY Award and BBC Sports Personality World Sport Star of the Year, and etc. She went on to lead the United States Women's Olympics gymnastics team named the final five at 2016 summer games while also winning individual all-around vault and floor exercise she is currently 24 years old simone Bow's story shows that with god nothing is impossible and god can bring you from your lowest if you have a little faith and believe thank you Come on, let's celebrate our own among the house. And that is our little known black history fact for this first Sunday of 2022. We will be honoring this month those of our senior leaders within Jerusalem. You just heard uh, uh, Deacon Emeritus Charles Pinkney, he's 94 years of age. We have um, also Deacon Carter who's present with us. He likewise being featured, he's 94 years of age. We have Brother Herman Washington, he's 97 years of age. And we have Sister Leo LeGrant, who's 97 years of age, and Sister Eloise Gatson, who's 100. Right. God bless her life, she'll be 101 this year. And we also have 
quite a few other our young, young children who we've asked to participate with us as well. If you saw Brother Calderon, he was up there. There'll be others like that who will be coming up. This is our history. If we don't tell our story, who's going to tell our story, right? We have talents and gifts right here among us. And if we don't exploit them, if we don't encourage them, then where are they going to go? To be encouraged, right? So we want to do it ourselves. We also want to be mindful that um, we have the meeting for the deacon, deaconess, and trustee trainings tomorrow at 5.30. I need to meet with those in the committee. Uh, myself and Deacon Littman and Deacon uh, Carter want to meet with everybody because this coming Friday and Saturday, we have our Deacon Deaconess training for this weekend coming up. We have Deacon uh, James Gardner coming out of Baltimore, Maryland. He's going to come down and do the session for us, and he is a teacher uh, of, of teachers as a deacon, so we thank God for his availability. We have a sock drive that is going on. Many of you may or may not have heard about it. But that is like we did about a year or two ago. We got socks for the, what is it, 180 place? And I assume that's the same place we're working with now? No, it was some other place, but we have socks. So if you have socks, uh, we prefer you to have brand new socks. If you can get some brand new socks and drop them off next door, let's say by this Friday. Melissa, are you here? Would that be good by this Friday? So it ends on the 24th then of this month. So you have up to the 24th of this month to bring socks next door. We have boxes. And please just drop them off and they'll put them in the box for you. And then we'll want to deliver them to whatever the entity is that we are going to deliver socks this year. I thank you for all your givings. Every need that has been met, every time we ask to do something, you all participate. We have on the 19th of this month our food drive again, our food giveaway. We thank you. We need people to help us on Friday to unload the truck. We need people to help us on Friday to distribute. So ma'am, sirs, especially brothers, if you can, come out on Friday to help us. Lend a hand. Just you won't pick the truck. You won't do it all by yourself. You got other persons with you. We just need more men to come out and help on Friday. Be honest, it's only about four of us, and you're talking about 2,000 pounds worth of stuff that we're moving. And then on Saturday, with women coming in and bagging it up, and then on Saturday, taking that stuff out st outside and distributing it, others, please, help out. Just for an hour. If you can come, do an hour. That's all. Anything that you can do will help us. So we appreciate that. Also, on the 26th, we have COVID shots. COVID shots for five and up. Those who are five years of age and up, we will have COVID shots here with DHEC, and we'll be doing the booster shots, and I'm sure I believe we'll be doing the uh, flu shots. So please, ma'am, sir, let it be known that we'll be doing those things here at Jerusalem. And uh, so we thank God for you. We thank God for your giving spirit. And uh, is there anything else we needed to announce that I might not have announced? Okay, God bless you. As a choir now come to lead us in our Semitic hymn, we then turn our hearts and minds to thus say the word of God. But it is one thing. The community uh, clothing giveaway would be the fourth Saturday, the fourth Saturday from 8 to 1 p.m. The clothing giveaway be in the parking lot the fourth Saturday from 1 to uh, 8 to 1 p.m. Take my 
your hands, precious Lord. Precious Lord. Take my hand. for this blessed privilege to be in your presence now. And we ask, Lord, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, you would move in the moments that you've set aside for us today to just, Lord, to minister your word because we know your word is truth. And we pray, Lord, that as your word moves, that it cuts like a two-edged sword to divide the asunder, to shake us up where we are comfortable, Lord, and to prepare us to be ready to move and get involved. We thank you, Lord, for these thine people, and we thank you for thine work, thy works. But, Lord, we also thank you for Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, who came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, Lord, I ask that as you move at the power of the, of the Holy Spirit, that you speak through me concerning that which you would have us to hear today. That somebody would not only be hearers, but they would also be doers and activate their lives into a life of service unto you. We ask this in Christ's name. When we hear you say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 A thought I would like to share with you is willing to get involved. Willing to get involved. Willing to get Involved. Look at your neighbor and ask, neighbor, are you willing to get involved? Look at your other neighbor since that neighbor didn't say anything. Neighbor, are you willing to get involved? Now ask yourself the same question. Am I willing to get involved? Throughout history, there have been many unsung heroes who were willing to get involved after the affairs of others, either, even when they could have turned their backs and gone the other way. People like Dr. Martin Luther King, he could have kept to himself and continued to just preach the word of God, but he didn't. He got involved. Claudette Colvin, born in Montgomery, Alabama on, the 25th, on September 5th, 1939, she could have given up her seat on the bus, but she refused to. She sat there and sparked what was called a revolution of the Montgomery boycott. We give a tribute to Rosa Parks, but it was Claudette Colvin who also was one of the first ones to refuse to give up her seat. Why? Because she was willing to get involved. 
Harriet Tubman could have enjoyed her freedom as a free slave and kept on living her life, a life of whatever it was that she wanted to do, but she decided that it was better to go back south and through the underground railroads, running to and from plantations, freeing over 700 slaves from captivity because she was one who was willing to get involved. This is personal for me because... 44 years ago, 45 years ago, nearly in Bamberg, a man by the name of Willard H. Duncan saw in a 13-year-old young man what he didn't see in himself. And some 45 years later, he showed him, paved the way for him that he could be what he wanted to be if he chose to take the right path in life. Way He could not have gotten involved. He could have remained in his family's mortician's job and just be a funeral home director. But he was one who was willing get involved and because he got involved it made a difference in my life. We have many people among us today who are around us who likewise have made the difference in others' lives and there are those who are not here right now who have made differences in your life. Why? Because they were willing to get involved. Maybe after reading our text we will understand why it's important for us to be willing to get involved. You see in our text we will meet, not, we will meet an ordinary man. A man whose name was not of importance, a man whose life was not of importance, his family's pedigree was not important, nor his financial status was important. We just meet a man who was concerned enough to get involved. Go with me as we read God's word in this thought, as we reflect upon what has already been read, starting at verse 25 and a few of the following verses in Luke 10. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, now he tested Jesus, saying, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What is it that you are reading of it? In other words, how do you understand it? He answered and said, you have to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with your strength and your mind and your neighbor as you love yourself. And he said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this, and you will live. But the young lawyer, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, And then who is my neighbor? Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Notice the transition of the text. He went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And he fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down the road, notice who was coming by. A priest happened to come by. And when he had saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, another man or woman of the church, came walking by. But they, he went across and he looked at the man, but when he saw him, he kept on going. But then a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, And when he saw him, he had compassion. And he went to him and he bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Now the oil was specific to the healing process. The wine was the purification. It was to clean the wound. But the oil was the ointment that purified, that that pretty much helped to make it better. Or like the antibiotic that you would put into someone when they would get sick. And he set him on his animal, brought him to the inn, and he took care of him. And on the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii, or some say one pence, and gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever you spend when I come again, I'll repay. So which of these three do you think was a neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, He who showed mercy on him. And he said, Then Jesus said to him, Go and do Likewise, the thought is willing to get involved. In our text, we see that Jesus was heading towards Jerusalem. And as he enters to a village of Samaria there, he began to speak to the disciples and he began to speak to the 70 that he had just sent out. The 70 had went out and they brought back reports about all that they have done. But he rebuked them of their attitude concerning what they have done concerning demons trembling or demons fleeing. He said, don't count it too much that, that you had power over the demons. You don't, don't boast about that. He said, but be mindful 
as it relates to what it is about God's kingdom you need to be mindful of and the things that you need to do and be prepared when the kingdom of God is coming. While teaching in, the, in this arena, a rich young ruler comes, a rich man comes, a learned man, an educated man. He comes and he comes with the intent to test Jesus by asking him a question of what do he have to do to inherit eternal life without paying a cost. Scripture tells us that in this exchange, Jesus reveals to him the importance concerning about truth of the gospel. He says to this young man that if you have what it takes, then it will cost you something to enter eternal life. He says, what do you have to do? He said, what does the word say? The word says that I am to love the Lord thy God with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my soul, with all my strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Powerful words with lasting implications. In just a few words, Jesus makes a profound statement. He says, know who your neighbor is, or who, know who your neighbors are, and then love them as you love yourself. You might ask me then, who is my neighbor? My neighbor are the ones who is nearest me. My neighbors are those who are in need, those who are in the community, those who are in the hospital, those who are in the jailhouse, those who are on the streets, those who are in the crack house, those who are lost outside the roadside of life. Those are my neighbors. What Jesus is teaching the disciples in the church is that we need to do more than seek our own personal comfort, but we must be willing to get involved with those around us. He was challenging us to think outside the box of our intellectual institutions of the church and to know that there are many people out there along the roadside of life who are lost and need help and they need assistance. Are you willing to get involved? He was teaching also that humanity, humility and the spirit of love and compassion are far greater assets for us to use than the arrogance of this elitist attitude of the Pharisees and even of this lawyer. He not only tells a story which shows a lack of understanding on the part of those who were supposed to be wise, but he also tells a story to the one who was supposed to be the wisest of them all. Have you ever met a person who wanted you to know just how much they know? You ever met somebody like that who know everything? And to the extent that they like the very thing that they swear that they know everything about. You ever met some of them people? You can talk to them about one thing and they already done it. You know, I jumped across the road. I took me three leaps to jump across the road. I know somebody who jumped across the road. They always got some comparison about something. I met a lot of people who have a whole lot of word, but they don't have any works. They can tell you everything about everything, but they have no work's sake among them. When it's time to put what they know in practice, guess what happened? You won't find them. As if to say the Lord told me to stop by and just tell you something and they keep on going. But when it's time to get involved, you can't find them anywhere. In our text, it's obvious that this man felt that his educational credentials and his family's influences somehow merited him special favor as he unwittingly tried to trap Jesus into a meaningless discussion about being his neighbor. He missed the part about love, and he missed the part about compassion. As we look at the text, we can see that the real intention of this man was never about loving those who were in need, never about knowing his neighbor, nor honoring the true essence of the law. His real intentions were to test Christ in verse 25 and then to justify himself in verse 29 as one who had insight and who quickly would repeat or quote the Bible, which was the scheme of the law. He would quote the law, but he wouldn't live by the same thing he was quoting. And so to show his arrogance, he asked Jesus then, tell me, who is my neighbor? You say, love your neighbor. Who is my neighbor? Being omniscient, that means being all-knowing. Jesus already knew, so he used this opportunity to teach this young man a lesson. Knowing there's a difference between knowing something 
and doing something about that which you already know. And seeing his arrogance, Jesus was letting this young man know that we are all spiritual beings and we are all in need of love, in need of love, and in need of compassion. However, for that to take place, it must take, it must take place in our heart, in our minds, in our souls, and with all of our strength. For that to take place, it must take place in our heart, our souls, and our minds, and with all of our strength. He was teaching this young man, of course, in the reverse psychology. Jesus assured the lawyers that he had given the right answer. But it was not about intellectualism or not about rules or about the law, but it was what was in your heart that defined who you really was as it relates to your witness in Jesus Christ. And upon hearing this, the disciples began to marvel among themselves. They were asking then, who in the world could be saved? So Jesus had to share with them the reality of those who are willing to submit themselves to Jesus Christ or to his will and the love of God. These are the ones who go the extra miles. These are the ones who can be saved are the ones who are willing to get involved. He gives them the parable of the Samaritan. The Samaritan, he outlines a place. If you look in the text with me, he outlines the place in verse 25, the time, the terrain, the victim, the suspects, and those who refused to get involved and the one who did. He speaks about the terrain. There was one coming from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and while he was coming down, he passed by terrains in a place called Jericho. Jericho was a rocky place. It was a place that was a vulnerable place for people to come because in it, thieves could hide out, and they can rob people. In fact, this Jewish man came run, walking by one day, and while he was walking by, he was overcome by some robbers who robbed him and took all of his possessions beat him so bad, the Bible said, left him half dead, and they left him alone, but by chance, when the church was over with, when all the temple duties had been completed, and they were leaving Jerusalem, heading back home now, the preacher and the church leaders walked right on down, looked at the man, but were unwilling get involved. In those days, priests regarded the most holy men of the Jews because they offered sacrifices in the temple and they were taught to constantly avoid spiritual impurities. The Levites were those who were holy, or placed men and women of holiness who were also to serve in the temple. Now I say men and women because we're talking now. I'm not talking about 2,000 years ago. So these are people who are now held to a standard, but both sects of them, both of them, regarded the most important word of the word of God that was to get involved. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yet as wise as they learned as they were, Jesus was pointing out that they lacked understanding and they lacked compassion. These were the ones who could tell you everything but wouldn't do nothing. Get involved. And so from this encounter, he shares with us three things, or three thoughts, three lessons that would help us to know that it's important for all of us to get involved. First thing, there are some who shouldn't have, but they do. There are some who shouldn't have, but they don't. As we read this text, we see where the first one leaves the temple. He's a priest. He's heading in the same direction as the man who was attacked. And while he was walking by, he looks over and he sees him and he keep on going because of his own hurriness to get home. One might ask what was on his mind. Well, if he's like most pastors in today's society, he may say that he had a church matter he was dealing with. Maybe he just left a deacon and deaconess, a deacon and trustee board meeting, and it didn't go right for him. Maybe he had a business meeting that had gotten out of hand, and maybe he had a bad day in the office, or maybe it was his normal behavior once he leave the church. He just one-dimensional going home, ain't care about nobody else along the roadside of life. But we do know this. He had an opportunity to do something, but he didn't. We don't know, but maybe common compassion would have compelled most folk to render aid to somebody else lying there on the side of the road wounded, as this man was, but they're the one who should have. We know he didn't, and he didn't do anything about it. He looked at the man, he walked by the man on the other side of the road as he was traveling to his house. Now, it is evidence that he did nothing to show love, 
nor compassion for the man or a woman who would be in his situation, nor that he in, uh, decide to help those who are in distress, yet he was called to do that. The Bible tells us in Matthew 7, 12, so whatever you wish of others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law of the prophets. Matthew 25 and 40 says, And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily, verily, I say, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it also unto me. Surely this priest, this noble man, missed the mark. And he failed to do what was right in the sight of God and according to God's word that he was taught to do, uh, to uphold, and he was sworn to uphold. And because of his failure, he missed the opportunity to get involved. My question is, can this same thing be applied to you and I? How many times have we missed the opportunity to get involved? How many times have we procrastinated our way in saying, I'm going to do it tomorrow? But tomorrow never comes. One week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Each time we hear the clarion call to do something, you say, I'm going to do it. But somehow or another, you're easily distracted with time. I would do it, but I don't have time. I would do it, but it's too far for me to come from, to come down there. How many of us have had done that? You must remember that getting involved is never an easy thing. But if we are children of the Most High God, we should always be ready to lend a hand. To walk by somebody in need and do nothing says a lot about who we say we are in Christ Jesus. Secondly, there are some who could but aren't willing to get involved. Text reads, and as the priest walked by, then there came a Levite, a keeper, a keeper of the temple. He walked by, and he likewise decided to look, but he did something different. He walked over. He said, uh, she looked dead. <laughs> and he kept on going. Didn't even bother to check a pulse. Take a cell phone out, you know, on your cell phone, it's called ICE. It's like an emergency number. See if she had a cell phone or something. Didn't bother to do anything. He could have, or she could have, but they didn't. Have you ever seen those people who were willing to travel to great lengths to see what's happening? Even if they can't do anything about what's going on or unwilling to do whatever with what they see, they got to be an onlooker. They got to be a spectator. They got to have the information. When a storm comes, these are the ones who examine the damage. And then they tell everybody about what's going on, but they won't get involved. They just saw Sister Hattie Sue's house got blown to smithereens by the tornado. And they tell everybody her house was blown away. But people from other states and other communities come to fix Sister Hattie's house. And they sit in their house and don't do a thing. I shared with my cousin the other day who was going through a situation and she was earnestly, invo earnestly concerned about what others weren't doing. And I said to her, don't worry about what others are not doing. You be one who get involved. If you, got, if you know your neighbor's hungry and she got a bunch of kids and don't seem to have much money. And you can tell by the way the children are probably dressed or how they act that they might need something. Just give it to them. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, he says, I can tell you about your love for me by the way you give. Because if you give to me and you have expectation that I have to reward you or someone have to applaud you for your giving, you already got your reward. Amen. But if you do it in secret. Then your father who sees in secret, who knows what you have need of, will reward you openly. <laughs> this Levite man, he was an assistant to the church. Let's say he was a deacon, he was a trustee, he was somebody who was working in the church. And he had a responsibility, but he walked, looked at the man and walked past the man and kept on going. Why do you think he wasn't interested? Maybe he was, wanted to be the first one to go and tell it. Maybe again, he wanted to look at the man and say, I think I owe that man some money. But if he's deceased, I think I'm free from giving him anything and I can take on off. But the truth is, there are some things we will not have enough time to run away from. There are some things we're going to have to give attention towards. 
Jesus told us in Luke 9, 57 through 62, here again the word of God when he said, Jesus was telling the disciples about the cost of following him. He said, as they were walking along the road, a man said unto him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. Then he said to another man, follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And, and Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still, another man said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the service of God's kingdom. And this is true today. To serve God faithfully, we will, it will become, we have to pay a price. And that price is going to cost some of us something to get involved. Both of these persons had a fiduciary responsibility. They had a responsibility according to the law to not only love their neighbor, show compassion to their neighbor, get involved, but they walk right by. Men who haven't put their hand to the plow, but look back. He said they're not fit for the kingdom of God. They talked about it. They tried to exemplify it by their outer arraignment. But their heart was so far away from that which they were preaching. Isn't that interesting? We have so many people who wear the outer coats. They were, now I'm not talking about Jerusalem. I'm just talking about people. I, somebody be done put it on Facebook. The Reverend Beard was talking about somebody in Jerusalem. But people in general who say they love the Lord can quote every scripture in the Bible and can pray a prayer that can move a pile of leaves in their yard. But when it come down to being committed to that which they preach and profess, they will not be present. But when everything is done, boy, we did a good job, didn't we? We were on fire with the Lord over there. Yes, we was. But then those ones who were working behind the scenes, they don't raise no fuss, and you see them often. We meet a man like this now in the text. The Bible never called his name. They said he was a Samaritan. Who's a Samaritan? A Samaritan is somebody, according to the Jews, they're like dogs. They're people who aren't even deserving. Now, some of us in here treat people of our own kind like dogs because of their status in life. Where you from? I'm from the east side. Where you from? I'm from the west side. Where you from? I'm from North Chester. Where you from? I'm from Bamberg. <laughs> and that's supposed to mean something, right? Because wherever you're from, you're supposed to look like people try. Oh, you, don't worry about him because he's from the east side. Don't, don't mess with that. He's from Acabee or Union Heights. You better watch out. He's from St. George Place, Old George the Greek. Watch out. Watch out. They're from the west side. Now, I was told the west side is across Rutgers Avenue. So we're on the east side, right? So, but because this man did not have a pedigree, he did not have anything going on about him that was significant, he was a Samaritan man who was counted out to be nothing. Yet, Despite his economic conditions and circumstances, the Bible says, as he rode by on his horse. Notice the text. Jesus also rode by on the donkey, too, didn't he? We're going somewhere. As he rode by on his horse, he was willing to get off his horse, come to the man. He didn't look at him. He stopped. He got down, and he ministered to the man's need. Jesus came through 40 and two generations, riding in on a donkey, going to wars, Calvary's unyielding cross, got off of his donkey at Calvary and took on our sins. Why? Because he was willing to get involved. This man got down on his knees, took up his oil and his wine, poured in the man's wounds, lift him up on his horse, took him to an inn. Jesus was born in a place that he was denied even a manger, uh, given a manger in a pig's truck. But yet he still bore our sins. This man took him and he said, if this man owes you anything, I will repay it when I come back the next time. In our text, it said that the Samaritan didn't hesitate to 
Renee, for the fact the Bible says that when he saw the man lying on the roadside, he didn't say, who were you? He didn't ask who your people were. He didn't ask where you were from. He didn't ask what church you attended. He didn't say who was your deacon, who was your pastor, or where you're going, why you are in this area, and where you're coming from. He just got down and he got busy. And this leads me to ask the question then, how many of us are willing to do the same thing for the sake of another? Are we willing to do whatever it takes to get involved? Are we willing to do whatever it takes to care and support those whom we do not even know? We're not told how much it cost him, but we do know this. He was willing to pay the price. He says, whatever it costs, charge it, and I'll pay it when he comes back. Yes. Jesus did the same thing for us out on Calvary. Yes, he, did. he said, I'm willing to pay the price, and whatever it costs, Daddy, I'm willing to pay it for them. And if it costs them anything, charge it to me. And he took that, uh, he took that sin debt for us, a debt that we could not pay ourselves. I don't care if it's unyielding brown and more in reluctant and personal way. Jesus is revealing to us the need to be like this Samaritan. Forget about all of your status in life, but be willing to get involved. He was doing it, the very thing that Jesus required all of God's saints to do. He was showing compassion. The least likely one, but the likely one to get involved. He wasn't afraid to touch an unclean person. Jesus ate with sinners. He was not afraid to render aid. He gave up his possession of his time and of his benefit. Jesus gave up his body. And while sacrificing himself out on Calvary's cross, this man sacrifices personal needs and comforts for the sake of somebody else. And he didn't care what color he was. He didn't care what race he was a part of. In this parable, Jesus exposed the self-righteousness of the young ruler and the scribes and the Pharisees as he was unable to give honestly an honest reply to the question, which of these you suppose to be a good neighbor to them who fell among the robbers? The man's arrogance was so bad that he could not even call the man name as a Samaritan. He just said the one who rendered help. Jesus says, then you go and you do likewise. Church, I ask you, to which of these three do you believe did good or were neighborly to this man? If you say the one who showed mercy, then I'm going to say to you this morning, go and do likewise. Why I want you to go and do likewise? Because it is good for us to go and tell of the good news that there's a man by the name of Jesus who's coming this way and he cares so much about you and your situation that he is willing to get involved. If you are naked, he says he will clothe you. If you are hungry, he said he will feed you. If you are thirsty, he said he will give you drink. And if you're sick, he will visit you. And if you're in prison, he will come unto you. Why? Because he loves you. There are people who need to know that Jesus saves, that he was born, a, he was, he's born in a manger. He came to save those who were lost. He was seeking the whosoever. And he, if you put your trust in him, he says, you shall have life more abundantly. Why? Because he loves you and he cares for you. Yes, go and do likewise, he says. Tell them of the good news of one who is able. Tell them that he will meet every need according to his riches and glory. And whatever you ask him to do, the word of God says he will supply. So are you willing now to get involved? Let's give God a hand clap of praise this morning for Jesus Christ, saving power. I'm so glad that Jesus didn't pass me by when I was out in my mess, lost in the road, roadside of life out near Jericho, being robbed of so many things, somewhat left for dead. But he heard my fervent cry. And I yelled out on that roadside, Lord, Jesus, thy son of God, have mercy upon me. The Bible says that Jesus heard, hears the prayers of the faint-hearted. And he answers and he attends himself unto them. I'm so grateful that he attuned himself to my request. And by his stripes. I am healed. 
God is looking right now for somebody this morning who's willing to get involved. You've been hanging out on the sidelines for a long time. You've been practicing and practicing and practicing to get in the game. And the coach now is looking at you. And he's saying to you, you ready? The next play you coming in, you've been around the game forever and ever. You just didn't have the chance to get in the game. And you've been complaining about those who've been in the starting lineup for a long time. Look at all them people in the church. They ain't doing nothing. Now you have a chance to get in the game. The question is, are you ready now to get involved? Are you ready? The door to the church is open. Come, let's celebrate Christ as the door to the church is now open. One way you can get involved is to give Christ your life. That is, commit yourself to the Lord. Cry out right now that you are a sinner. Confess your sins to the Lord. And then rise up and come forward to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Is there one today who's present with us who desires to give his or her life to the Lord to be baptized this day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you are here and you want to come under the bonds of baptism after you have now made your public confession in your heart, repentance is just a public confession of your faith in God, repenting from the sins of the world. If you're present today and you want to come and be a part of Jerusalem or a part of the body of Christ through the bonds of baptism, rise up now and come. Your hand, but give God your heart. Come. If you will come to Jesus while you have time, that's all you have to do is come. When you hear that still, small voice speaking on your heart, that's the Holy Spirit moving you. Don't worry about other people. people you got some people who still want to stay out on the sidelines. They, they want to be in the, in, the, in the arena. They just don't want to get in the game, but they want to be close to the field of play because they can say, I was at the game and I was down on the 50-yard line. Man, I was sitting right next to so-and-so and so. But it's your time now to get involved. Don't be like the priest. Don't be like the Levite and just pass by. Because he might not be coming back this way again. We know he's going to return for the church. That is Christ. But when he leaves, he's taking the church with him. And only those who've accepted him as Lord of their life will be given the opportunity to live again with him. Now, there's another place you could be without him. In that place, many shall find themselves there because they refuse the very gift of God, that is the Son of Jesus Christ. Is there one here today who desires to receive Christ and make him your aim? Maybe you've been saved and baptized, but you're looking for a congregation where the word is being preached and taught. And some reason today, the Lord has been touching your heart to become like the Samaritan. You don't want to just rock past Jerusalem. You just don't want to be in the environment of Jerusalem and not connect it. You want to get involved. If the Lord has blessed you today to come and make this day your day, I'm asking you now to rise up. Don't worry about the Levi. Don't worry about the priest. But you yourself, be like the Samaritan. Be one who got involved. Be one who made a difference. Come. The doors to the church is open. All you have to do is come by your Christian experience or you can come by letter, whichever one, and make that statement today that's all you have to do maybe you've been in Jerusalem and you left and you're back and you're wondering man how do what do I have to do to get back involved well get up come on down make your public statement of returning and then come and get busy become active renew yourself in fellowship with believers as we trust that God will lead God and direct you in your return maybe you moved in the area you're not a part of Jerusalem. Your job sent you here, military school sent you, and you're trying to unite with a congregation of the faith, and you believe this is where you might want to come, we'll take you on the watch care, and we'll watch over you, and we'll guide you, and we'll commune with you, fellowship with you, as while you are here in Charleston. If this is where you think God wants you to be, then we want you to come. Come. Maybe you came after the... Uh, have mercy. God bless. Amen. Come on down. Have mercy. Come on. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 I had the privilege the other day to meet Miss Dave. She came by the office and she said the Lord moved her heart. 
that she wanted to become a part of Jerusalem. And I told her on Sunday morning, if it be her will, that God sent her here, that she would come. She's friends with Minister Buncombe, like sisters. And so she came on Thursday to activate her faith to become a part of Jerusalem. I received her information. I forwarded a letter indicating her decision to come here. And she's here today making that public statement in your presence that she desired to be a Jerusalem Baptist Church. You want to tell them your name? My name is Shirley Days. Shirley Days. And she come by way of Royal Baptist Church, but she's down here now to be a part of Jerusalem. Can I get a motion to receive Sister Days based on her confession of faith? She's been baptized, and I've already sent a letter on her behalf. It's been moving properly, second, that we receive her based on her confession of faith. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. aye. Any opposes? I have it and so carry. I've already given her her new members ministry book. I've advised on what she needs to do. So she's about ready to get them moving. So we just ask as while God is sending people in our season church, let us not be like the priest in the, Samar uh, in the Levite, but let us be like the Samaritan, always willing to get involved. If there's one today who came after prayer and you desire prayer, would you stand? If there's, one, if there's another who desire prayer, would you stand? Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. That's what you Come together this morning for prayer. Amen. So we got a brother crying out for a mother and a sister. If you're standing in need of prayer where you are, would you rise and we stand together in prayer? See, my daughter's coming and she's coming. They're coming. Oh, Lord, a kill. Have mercy. My niece coming too. Have mercy. Amen. And sweet my big niece coming in this morning too. Let's give her a hand clap of praise as she come down for prayer this morning. Amen. Oh Lord. Kia, hey, we got Kia Houston who come this morning. She by the confession of her faith and having been baptized, she wanna join Jerusalem Baptist Church. Have mercy. <laughs> Have mercy. Can I receive that same motion for Kia? Also, I mean for Sister Daly, these for Kia as well. Second, has been moving properly. Second, all in favor, let me know. Am I saying aye? Aye. Any opposers? Eyes have it and so carry. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Brother Benny, come for prayer this morning too. We thank you. Let us pray as we come together. Father, we thank you for what we witnessed here this morning. And we thank you, Lord, for Kia. We thank you for Sister Days. But we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that they weren't like the priests and the Levite, but, Lord, they became like the Samaritan and willing to get involved. And now, Father, for sending them in a the right now time, in a right now moment in their life, we pray right now, Father, that you will surround them now with godly and God-fearing people. That as they walk together, Lord, in the spirit of truth, that, Lord, they'll see that the decision they made today was a right choice and a right call. But help us, Lord, to encourage them, to be an encourager to them as they make their walk in life. Bless those, Lord, like, who now stand in need for a mother, for a sister. And Brother Bennett, Lord, who's praying also. We pray for everybody who's standing under the sign of my voice also, Lord, who desire prayer. Lord, they might have stood together here at the altar, but Lord, at the altar of their hearts, they're right there crying out, Abba, Father. And whilst, Lord, they're standing there, help us, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus to look to you, Father God, for our faith and to strengthen us right now, Father God. God, our heart, mind, soul, body, and even our strength, Lord. We say thank you right now, Lord, for the victory over whatever the enemy has been trying to do. And then, Lord, we want to just say, help us to stay involved and help us to continue to walk right as we fight this fight of faith until you come to rapture the church back to yourself. We thank you, Father God, for those who received you and accept you as Jesus Christ in your lives. But when you do return, we'll hear you say, well done, good and faithful servants. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, we ought to celebrate Christ right now and tell God thank you. Oh, sacrifice.
Every now and again, we need some Does help and some support. We thank Morgan for walking with Kia coming down. God bless. Amen. As we turn our hearts and minds now. You can know. You can only be blessed. And fine. And have peace. And sweet. And sweet breath. Your body, your body, body and soul as you yield on the altar of Christ's can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest and sweet rest as you yield him as you yield him your body your body and soul Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. My God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Give him your body and your soul. Hallelujah. Let us now read our church covenant as we come together, as we read our church covenant together. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God.
Lord, I thank you, thank you, Jesus. I thank you, thank you, Jesus. I thank you for the days of my life. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the days of my life. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for the days of my life. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for the days of my life. You know I thank you. You know I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Oh, I thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord, I thank you for the days of my life, oh, Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord, I just Oh, Lord, I just, oh, I want to thank you for being so good to me. You've been so good to me. Hey, Lord, I just want to thank you if he's done something for you. Lord, I just want to thank you. change it right here. I want to thank you for shedding your blood for me. I like that. Hey, hey, hey Lord, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. changing it because it's first Sunday. I want to thank you for shedding your blood.
blood for me. Come on, put your hands together. to thank you Lord I just want to thank you oh Lord Lord I just <laughs> oh I want to thank you for being so good to me Hallelujah. Yes, God. Thank you for being so good. The Bible says in the night that Christ sat with the disciples to give the Lord's Supper, he took the bread and he gave thanks, which means he prayed. And after having prayed, he broke it and said, take eat. This is my body which is broken for your every sin. Father, we thank you for the body of Christ. We thank you for the sacrifice yes, that he gave for us out on Calvary's unyielding brow. We thank you for the atonement of all of our sins. Yes. We thank you, Father God, that he counted us worthy, yes, that he took the cross in our stead. And Lord, we come today in celebration and memorial and memories of all that he has done because he loved us. He died for us. In Christ's name we pray now, let us break the bread and eat it. Yes, Not only did he take the, fruit of, take the bread, which was his body, and he gave thanks, he also took the fruit of the vine, which is his blood, and he also blessed it. And after he blessed it, he supped it, and it says, drink ye all of it, for it is the blood of my covenant, the new covenant that I have with you, that we won't drink it again on this side, but we'll drink it new on that side in my Father's kingdom. Father God, we thank you for the blood of Christ, not only the body of Christ broken, but the blood of Christ that now washes away all of our sin, that cleanse us from even our most recent sins. You cleanse us and you set us free. Now help us by the power of the Holy Spirit after this cleansing to walk in the newness of life. We pray this in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now drink ye all of it. And after they ate of the body and drank of the blood, the Bible says that they prepared their hearts and minds now to go out in the vineyards and the hedges, the highways, and proclaim and preach the gospel under the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Immediately after our communion, we have one for the right hand of fellowship. I just brought to my attention. And we're going to have him, uh, them come up, little Abraham Scott come up to uh, prepare himself for our right hand of fellowship this morning. He's done what was asked of him by way of going through his new members ministry. He's faithful in the Sunday, little youth Sunday school. So we're going to offer him after we receive this, taking up, the right, taking up communion. We're going to give him the right hand of fellowship. And he and I will be standing at the door and you can walk by and I want you to shake his hand and welcome him into the fold. How many of you love the Lord God? If you love him, you ought to show some signs. You ought to tell God thank you. You ought to just show it, telling him thank you for all that he has done for us on this day. We got little Mr. Abraham Scott here with us today. He's gone through his new members ministry. He's done everything he's been asked of him. 
and his mom made sure that he was on point. And we come today to offer to him what we offer to everybody who goes through their new members ministry. The opportunity now to become full-fledged members of Jerusalem Baptist Church. So now today we make the appeal to receive him today, to have received the right hand of fellowship. So we probably move in second that we will extend to little brother Abraham the right hand of fellowship to become a full-fledged member of Jerusalem Baptist Church today. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. aye. Any opposers? Eyes have it. Abraham said, I'm going to sign my own self. I, <laughs> he said, I agree. <laughs> so to God be the glory. Let us rise. Let us rise to our feet. Remind we do have some things, items in the back back there. We want you to take some items with you as you leave here. Some, some gifts that were given to us. And if you can't use it, take it to someone you think might be able to use it. But we don't want anything to go to waste. Abraham and I are going to be standing out the front door going out. We ask you to come by, shake his hands as you walk out the door. Please, ma'am, sir, encourage him as he walk in the newness of life in the Lord here in Jerusalem. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We give you honor. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Now may the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may he rest, rule, and abide with all of us, henceforth, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.